The Honourable Member for Fisher. Speaker, uh, my question is also directed to the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister would be aware that, it, that a United Nations report on human development has revealed that Australia recorded the highest levels of income disparity of any OECD country. A UN spokesman was quoted in The Age today as saying, the richest 20 per cent of the population get more than 10 times the wealth of the poorest 20 per cent, a higher rate than the United States, Switzerland and most industrialised countries. It is a shame and it's shameful and the government stands condemned. Is it true, as the report states, that the gap between rich and poor in Australia is now wider than in any other industrialised nation? How can a government with this record masquerade around as a champion of the underprivileged? Yeah. The Honourable the Prime Minister. Uh, as I said the other day, it's, you'll have to do more than questions of this nature to try and disguise the fact that you've always tried to kick national income up to the wealthy. That's all you've ever done. That's all you've ever done. Mr. Sp Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker let, me just, let me just record the fact that when the member for Bennelong the self-proclaimed champion of families was the treasurer. The value of support for, for low-income families actually fell by more than two percent. Actually fell by more than two percent. Whereas, Mr. Speaker, under Order. Labor, when well, you're making Higgins. the comparison, the under Labor, Higgins. support. Well, you've asked the question. Let me give you the answer. The member for Higgins. Mr. Speaker, support for low-income families. With, with children renting privately, has risen by 30 per cent under this government. In the same period, under the Fraser government, it fell by 2 per cent. It fell by 2 per cent. And, Mr Speaker, I made, the, I made the case the other day again. The member for Fisher has asked when the question. When making any to reference the to these questions about income. Order. Mr Speaker, are we, are we going to. Well, those on my left will remain silent and listen to the answer. The Prime Minister. Speaker, one cannot simply look at, at uh, levels of income. One has got to look at after-tax income, transfer payments in a well-targeted social security system, transfer payments, and a consequence of those things will see that the poorer sections of the Australian community are much better off under this government today than they ever were under a coalition government. Household disposable income rose in every year the government was in office. Every year the government was in office. There are 26 per cent more people in work today than there were in 1983. As I said, the employment growth under this government is multiples of what was achieved under the Fraser government. And as a consequence, Mr Speaker, we had more employment growth in Australia. I think I'd need to check the record, but more than any OECD country over the period 83 to 93. Now, as a consequence, Mr. Speaker, Australia is more, more fully employed. After-tax incomes have risen. After-tax income, the bottom rate of tax has been reduced from, from 30 to 20 per cent. The tax-free threshold was, has been increased from 4,750 to 5,400. Oh, the, the Prime Minister might just resume his seat. <coughs> resume your seat. During the course of this week, on a number of occasions, I have had recourse to remind members of the provisions of Standing Order 55. Indeed, I think I can recall that during the course of this week, I gave a general warning to members of this place. Not only do I issue that general warning now. But my resort, as has been the case previously to Standing Order 304A, I think will be surpassed by my resort to actually suspending members from the service of this place for 24 hours, or at least going for a vote on that, if, in if interjections and the level of constant interruption continues. The Prime Minister. Member for Fisher on a point of order. The Prime Minister has forgotten the question, Mr Speaker. The question was, is it true, as the report states, there that the gap no between rich and Resume poor seat. in Australia is Resume now wider your seat. There is than no any other industrialised nation? Resume your seat. There is no point of order. There is no Resume point of order. Resume your seat. The Prime Minister has the that is that, that the Australian Resume economy— Resume your seat. I name the member for Fisher. Yeah. The question is, the motion be agreed to. All those of that opinion say aye. To the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. Noes have it. Vision required. Ring the bells.
under the provisions that exist during divisions. Lock the doors. The question is the motion be agreed to. The ayes will pass to the right of the chair, the nose to the left. I appoint tellers for the ayes, the honourable members for Fowler and Port Adelaide. Tellers for the nose, the honourable members for Wannan and Riverina.
Yoga. and the Leader of the Opposition. Look, I'm thoroughly enjoying this discussion of Labor Liberal Party history, but we can do without it. Order the result of the division is ayes 77, no 64. The question is therefore resolved in the affirmative. The honourable member is suspended from the service of the House for 24 hours. The Prime Minister, in conclusion. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I'll conclude on this point. The, that, that the same report, the same report which, makes, which alleges this disparity in income says this. In Australia, 400 people per 100,000 suffer each year from drug-related crimes compared to 225 people in Canada and 234 people in the United States. Now, if anybody in this country believes that, that the drug-related crime in Australia is twice that of the United States, then they probably have been taking LSD. And that's what I think about the report, and that's what I think about your mate's question. 